What's going on fellow engineers? This is Kenny and thanks for checking out the Almost Engineer channel. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about a contactor, this thing right here, and how it works. Stay tuned. All right, so this is the contactor that I took off of my HVAC unit. And this is the old one. So I just wanted to talk about what a contactor is and what it does and how it works. And so there are some elements on here that are not exactly right. Uh, with a modern contactor, uh, this one is probably original to the HVAC unit that I have. So there are some differences that I noticed between the new one and the old one. All right, folks, so I got my new contactor, which is this one over here, and my old contactor, which is this one here. Um, for the most part, they are pretty much the same. The screw on this one, actually, I had to screw it all the way out to get the lead out of there. So, um, but there are some significant differences that I'm noticing. So on the top of this one, it actually, you stick the wire in, whereas this one had a clamp that uh, you put a connector on it and then you put that connector around the screw head. So uh, the top is essentially like the bottom now where you stick the whole wire in and then you screw to, to clamp it down all the way. Uh, also the same number of pins here. Um, looks to be there's eight on the bottom and there's eight on the top here. Um, I only had, I believe it was two wires here. And this one also is enclosed. So as you can see, you can see the coil on this one um, from both sides. So, but you can on this one. And the reason being is somebody actually took account that, hey, bugs can actually get into this thing and cause problems. So what they do now is they actually seal it up entirely. So all this mechanical stuff like this right here is not exposed to the elements. However, you can take these two screws off and this plate will come up and then it will look just like this inside underneath this cover here. So that's the difference between the new contactor and the old contactor. And so with this particular contactor unit, so we'll start off with the label, of course. And here you'll see it's rated for 25 amps. Um, and it's also a 24 volt coil. And so the contactor that I put on is actually rated for 30 amps, but it's also 24 volts. And so what the amperage has to do is that it has a maximum capacity. You know, you see it says 25. So if you try to push 30 through it, more likely you'll have a problem. And I think that kind of helped in some cases the failure of this one. And so if you see right here where the screw is, you'll see this plastic here is actually burned and cracked. It actually broke off. Um, what happened there was it looks like the wire on it actually broke, um, burned some kind of way. I don't know if something got into it and caused it to short out or what the case was, but this is the, con the con uh, connector that was on it after the fact from the wire where it burned off at. So, um, and as you see, this screw is actually brown. So I don't know if that is an indicator of the problem that was going on with it because it should not have been brown. It should be like the rest of these, you know, silver, whatnot. Um, so just a walk overview of everything. So on the bottom here have uh, pins. You can have these push connectors that go on these pins here at the bottom. And then you also have these two scr terminal screws. And so you can stick the wire in this gap here, tighten the screw down, same thing on this side. And then on the top is a different setup because they actually use these uh, connectors that go over the screw. And then you tighten the screw down on the connector instead of sticking the wire directly in. Um, so that's that side. And this is what is known as a single pole breaker. And there's also a thing called a double pole breaker. So the pole is the thing that actually moves. 
So this one here is not seized up. It does move, but it only has one pole, which is this side. So this right side here, as you see, there's a metal bar that goes from top to bottom. That means this side is always hot. This side is the side that switches. So when you turn on the AC unit, this goes in and it connects the bottom, which is where the power comes in at, to the top, which is where it goes out to the compressor and the fan on the condenser unit and completes the circuit. So we'll see what happens. So the fan is running, but there's no, I don't hear the compressor running too. And so that's how that works. Now, how does this move back and forth? Well, on this side and on this side, you have these two connectors as well. These, since this is a 24 volt coil, these connect to the 24 volt wires that come from the air handler that is on the building interior. So when there's a call for cooling, the thermostat connects the wires inside of it and that signal goes to the air handler. The air handler triggers that same, uh, sends that signal out to the condenser through one side and then back out the other. Therefore you complete the circuit. And when you complete the circuit on here, this pushes in and completes the 240 circuit. So if you ever heard me discuss about relays before, um, this is essentially the same concept as a relay. You have a voltage of one type, in this case would be in 24 volts, controlling a voltage of a higher type, which in this case is 240 volts. That's 120 on the left, 120 on the right which equals 240. Now, this one may or may not say it, I do not believe it does, but it is designed for 240, but it doesn't say it. The unit itself says 240. Um, the actual condenser unit says 240 on it. So, and then once you remove the 24 volts, so the thermostat says, hey, I've reached the set temperature, shut off. So that means the thermostat disconnects the connection between the air handler and it. And so as a result, that same connection is also removed. So the incoming 24 volts is removed from here and thus there's nothing on this side to go back. So this uh, connector in the middle here will spring up and there is a spring underneath it. Um, as you can kind of see right there, there's a spring there. And so that comes back up to disconnect the connector uh, connection between the top and bottom. So that covers how a contactor works. Hopefully you've learned a little bit and are able to apply this in the future. If you have any questions about a contactor or a relay, please hit me up and drop a comment in the comment section below. Also, please check out me on social media, on Instagram and Twitter at almostengr and check out my website, thealmostengineer.com.